All right, guys, um, I'm going to present on SEO ranking factors today. Um, I hope you appreciate that this is a bit of a medium level uh, explanation of ranking factors because I've got to tell it to everybody in the room. There's some people here who are maybe going to know a lot of this stuff already. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry about that, but um, it's got to cater to everybody. And if you've got any more advanced questions, please feel free to just put your hands up. I'll be happy to answer them right now. Or you could email me or Twitter me at any date, and I'll get back to you straight away. OK, so first off, who am I? Um, I work with Solar, which is one of Mornisha's partner companies. I'm the director of search marketing at Solar. And uh, I do work with some of Mornisha's clients as well, as well as Solar's own clients, to uh, get search engine ranking positions. Um, these days, I mainly work in SEO, not PPC, although I have worked in PPC a lot in the past. I've been in search marketing for five years now. Um, I went to SEO straight out of university. Uh, I've enjoyed it ever since I've been there. It's a great position to be in, and uh, it's a great industry to work in. I studied psychology and sociology, which is relatively important because it helps me understand about conversion rates. Um, one of the biggest deals that SEO, I think, don't understand is that they try and edit sites purely for the rankings. They don't appreciate that affiliates like you, merchants uh, like you guys, you, you've got to keep cater to conversion rates. There's no use being number one if you've got, not got any conversions. Um, in Solar, I manage an SEM team. Um, there's about four or five of us at the minute. We work on about 15, 20 sites between us. So it, it's a massive range of different products. So the results I'm getting and the facts I'm presenting to you today I know they work because I've seen them in really competitive industries and the same um, industries that you guys are targeting as well. And there's my Twitter address. If you, uh, if you want to tweet me any questions after or any time, just follow me there and uh, give me a shout. So what we're going to look at today, I'm going to tell you what a ranking factor really is. Uh, I'm going to go through some of the old ranking factors, which you might already know, and tell you which ones still apply and why. We're going to look at some of the newer ranking factors and what they actually mean. And I'm going to go through a few recommended tools and resources, just so you can take those away with you. OK, uh, a ranking factor, what really is it? Well, it's just a catch-all term used to apply to things that we know actually affect search rankings and are part of the algorithm. Um, mostly, I'm going to be talking about Google's algorithm in this, but 90% of ranking factors go across all the search engines anyway. Um, there's a lot of facts about ranking factors. Um, these are a couple you might already know. Google claims they use over 200 different ranking factors. Uh, I would probably say that's true, because there is a lot of stuff we don't know. Um, not all ranking factors are equal. So as we go through this presentation, you're going to see different ranking factors. Not all are as important as others. I've tried to highlight that, and I'm sure a lot of you already know that, but that's the case. No one person, not even the Google engineers, knows everything. Um, they're split into little teams like web spam or quality control. No one knows exactly how the Google algorithms index. So if anybody tells you they know everything about the algorithm, they can do anything, they're wrong because no one does. They make so many changes on so many regular basis, no one knows everything. Um, and the most important thing is probably that most people know or a lot of the ranking factors. Um, what people disagree on in SEO is probably how important each one is. Uh, I'm going to again, I'm going to highlight that a lot in this presentation, but that's the common consensus. Here's some of the uh, more common ranking factors you've probably already heard about. Things like domain names, page speed, link counts, uh, PR or page rank, title tags, H tags, meta tags, and alt attributes. They, they're banded around a lot in SEO. A lot of, obviously, there's a lot of subpar SEO websites and stuff out there that will tell you basic information on this stuff. And most of them are, are generally right. It's just that uh, there's a lot more ranking factors than this. There's a lot more you can do. Um, while I'm going to cover a lot of the ranking factors today, again, there are a lot that I just haven't got time to cover here. So if you've got any questions about something in specific that maybe you've heard works or doesn't work and you want to know, just pop your hand up and I'll answer that question for you. OK. Um, one of the biggest things that I feel that modern SEO doesn't take into account is consistency and relevance. Um, it's all well and good putting title tags into a certain thing or including a certain amount of images or keywords, but you need this on your site. So I'm just going to explain a little bit what I think consistency is so you guys can apply it to your websites. There's, there's a big here. I'm going to put the slides online afterwards so you can read this more. No need to make notes now. But mainly, consistency is about keeping a consistent theme on your website. 
your site cannot rank for everything. Um, you need to choose a, a select portion of whatever market you're targeting and keep your website inside that where possible. Now, I'm aware there are sites that do rank for a huge amount of things like Play or Amazon or everything. Um, but with the site kind of sites that we're all working on, it's a little bit different. And when you come into, a, maybe you're making a new site or you're reading the SEO in your current site, what you need to do is pick a theme straight from the off. Not a, a, a keyword, more of a keyword uh, idea or strategy. So for example, maybe you're working on this uh, new dental product. And um, I'm sure that there are literally thousands of keywords surrounding teeth whitening. There's the, what did you mention was the chemical that's in it? Yeah, so there's, there's that keyword. There's going to be the teeth whitening keyword. There's going to be the gel keywords. And they all go together quite well in a theme. Um, what you need to do when you're choosing those keywords is limit how much you spread that out. So maybe you can go and go, right, my site's going to be a more medical focused site. I'm going to use the, the, the chemical compound name and I'm going to use the gel keyword. But I'm going to steer away from the home dentistry kits because it's, there's no connection between that home dentistry kit keyword and the chemical. The, the connection is in the root keyword. So it's in the dentist kit, the teeth whitening. Um, and a great illustrator of this point, I know it's a, it, it can sound a little bit complicated, but if you use the Wonder Wheel on Google, it's a fantastic illustration of this point. So pop teeth whitening in there, see what Google thinks is, is connected to that. Explore the Wonder Wheel, let it, let it expand, you'll see it goes through tracks. Um, and group your keywords like that. Don't group your keywords based on what you put in Google Keyword Tool and it just kicks out in a huge, great list. Because they're not all going to be connected. They're, the only thing they're connected to is the fact that the, the root keyword is in it. Um, as I go through this presentation, I am going to keep referencing consistency and relevance. And all it means is just this very basic point, keep, keep your focus tight. If you've got a small site, you've got a small group of keywords, keep it consistent, keep it relevant, and you will rank a lot better. Just a little heads up, I want to focus on what consistency isn't, is just copying and pasting the same data. It's not using exactly the same keyword for every page. It's not copying someone else's website or, or any of these other things that's listed here. You still need variation. Your anchor text still needs variation. Your headers and titles still need variation. It's just, they need to be a consistent theme. Okay, so on to our first ranking factor. Um, domains and TLDs. So. I'm sure you're all uh, aware that buying keyword rich domains is a, a big help in Google and uh, it still is a strong importance even with the caffeine updates. I know uh, some people have read about caffeine, some people won't um, and even with the Mayday updates it's still a good factor. Here's a few tips. Aim for shorter domains without the hyphens. Um, if you've got a choice between these two variations, so you've got adjective keywords to so say it could be uh, best teeth whitening or you've got, you could have United Kingdom hyphen teeth hyphen whitening, go for the adjective domain. Um, I realize that sometimes the hyphen domains look a lot better. You can have teeth hyphen whitening, it looks a lot shorter. Um, but I honestly have seen that hyphenated domains are getting a little bit spammed down now. I think probably too many people have gone for that tactic and Google is a little bit aware of it. Um, no domain will ever give you automatic good rankings. If you're buying a second hand domain, no matter what anyone says, it will not give you automatic good rankings, even if it's currently got it. Uh, if you change servers, it, it's very likely that it will affect rankings, so never assume that the domain will automatically give you positions. Um, and again, just on that point, domain history is very important. If you're buying a second-hand domain, always check into its history. Find out where it's ranking at the minute. Find out what they've done in the past to it. Uh, TLDs, which are the little bits that come after your domain, so the .com, the .co.uk, are also very important at the minute. Um, the most important part of these is regional targeting. So if you buy .co.uk, uh, Google are being quite strict at the moment with where that ranks. I've seen .co.uk is doing okay in .com, but they're definitely these days being automatically pushed up .google.co.uk. Um, a very important factor on this one is that it also works against you. So I've specifically seen .com sites that are UK focused in Google Webmaster Tools, UK addresses on the pages, but they'll rank a lot worse in google.co.uk because they're not a .co.uk domain. So if you really want to target uh, the United Kingdom, go for a .co.uk. Um, Google say no other TLD, for example, .edu, um, gets automatic boosts or penalties. Um, I would say that I've never seen a .edu domain get a boost for anything other than the fact that it's already important for having massive amounts of usage. Um, 
remember your domain ties strongly into your website theme. So this is about consistency again. Don't, don't buy a weight loss domain and then try and ha uh, advertise teeth whitening on it because it's not, it's not going to fly with Google. They're going to pick up that it's, you're selling multiple things and you're probably just an affiliate. And uh, remember always that if you buy a keyword heavy domain that it's going to count for anchor text in some places. Some directories, some listing places will only let you use your URL, which will be your link. And every time you write your URL on the net, Google can spider that. So if you try and get a keyword that you're targeting in your domain, you can get a few extra links on that. URLs is the next ranking factor. It's medium importance at the minute. Um, they used to be a little bit more important, but today they are a little bit less, just again, because people are overusing the tactic. Um, I'm just going to highlight something. URLs and domains are different things. Is everybody aware of the difference between a URL and a domain, yeah? Okay, good. <laughs> um, basically, the difference is that your domain is just the start. Your URL is the whole string, including the file extension if you're using one. Um, the reason I mention this is because I have seen a lot of people asking me questions before. They say URL and they mean domain and both versions are around. So it's important to stay on top of which one's which. Um, Consistency comes into play again here. Um, I haven't really seen a huge amount of advantage from using hyphens to separate words in pages. I know that historically a lot of SEOs have recommended to do that, but I don't really see a huge benefit from it. It doesn't bring a penalty, but my point is just be consistent. If you're going to use hyphens to separate the words in your URLs, make sure you do it on every page. If you're going to use um, or one word, just do it on every page. If you've got a mix-up, then your site looks, again, inconsistent, incomplete. It looks like it's not being maintained. Um, if you're using WordPress, then this problem is not going to be a problem for you because it will automatically hyphenate domain uh, URLs. So it's not too much of an issue. But if you're manually building your site, just try to be consistent. Um, more importantly, keep your URLs short. Uh, long URLs were definitely penalized in the last update. There was a lot of e-commerce sites that people were using or uh, Wikipedia clones and things like that with very long hyphenated uh, URLs which were cut out of the index in the newest update. So I recommend that you keep URLs short where possible. Um, correct management of URLs as well is very important. Uh, use web, Google Webmaster Tools and Bing West Webmaster Tools to ignore parameters that aren't important. And also use HT access where possible to rewrite um, dynamic URLs into static URLs. At the end of the presentation, I've actually included a HT access file which you can download that will show you how to do that. And you can always ask me again, email or Twitter, if you want to know how to rewrite a URL, I'll give you a hand with that because it's not the easiest thing in the world. And the other important thing with your URLs, if you're finding that you're not getting traffic to a certain one, go into Webmaster Tools and make sure that they're being indexed correctly. Uh, if you submit a sign to Webmaster Tools, it will always tell you how many URLs out of that sitemap have been indexed, and it's important that you keep on top of that and make sure that it is being indexed, otherwise you've got a problem and you need to find out, is it your robots.txt block in it, or is it just the quality of the site? Okay, another famous SEO thing is a title tag. This is still really an important factor, but some things on it have changed recently. So just to be clear, when we talk about the title tag, I'm talking about in the code, we're using the open brackets title code. Um, still an important factor, especially when paired with your domain. So again, consistency and theme in your website, same title, similar domain, you'll do a lot better. Um, new evidence has suggested that early on in the title tag is better. So if you're targeting a keyword, uh, say again, teeth whitening, put teeth whitening at the start of your title tag. You may be wanting to get a brand in there, maybe you're wanting to get your website address in there, put that afterwards, or put any boilerplate text, which is why I call it, some people maybe don't know that term, but. All that goes at the end of your title tag. Now, get that really important keyword as the first, key, uh, first word in your title tag. Um, more importantly, and especially for affiliates, not so much for SEOs, but for you guys, your title tag is your CTA in the search engine positions. Always remember that not only has it got to fulfill an SEO obligation, it's got to fulfill a CRO obligation. When people see your title tag, they should want to click through to your site. So, as, as important as balancing it for SEO is, also remember that when people are looking at that long list of um, 10, 20 websites that they've got set, you want to stand out as well. Um, and on that note, you can use symbols in your title tag. Google index a good 90% of the symbols. Um, I've noticed definitely things like exclamation marks or uh, pipe bars and stuff in your, in your title tag will make people notice it more when everybody else is not using them. 
depends on the SERPs that are currently there. Obviously, you have to analyze what your competition are using, but it can get you a little bit more click-through rates. Meta tags, another popular SEO one for people to talk about, but they're becoming a lot less important these days. Google definitely doesn't index 90% of them now, so it uses them, it uses the meta description for it for snippets, but it's not really that important for ranking. Um, for other engines, just remember the consistency and keyword themes again, always keep it inside that theme. Uh, your meta description these days should be about 100 characters, mainly because it, other things now use it, like Facebook groups if they pick up your title, or Twitter, or and hundreds of other things, that they'll only pick up the first 100 or so characters. So if you want a good meta description to appear inside Facebook when you put that little link in, stuff like that, you're better off keeping it below 100. Um, again, it's important for CTR in the SERPs, but not for rankings. Um, I've mentioned... Uh, the keyword tag here, it, it, again, it's not used that much these days. It's mo mostly for the smaller engines, but do do keep, put it on there. Keep it short, maybe five, ten keywords, and just keep it with the themes on your site. The caffeine update that happened recently means that meta tags may swing back into favour in the future. I can't, you know, there's no confirmation on this yet, but Google are saying that a, a big feature of caffeine is that it stores more information about your website. So we may see things like the author tag, the location tag. There are actually meta tags for geolocation where you can put longitude and latitude in. We might see these things come more into usage in the future, so it might be a good idea to read up on them. And the other really important thing, it's not really meta tags, but it's a little bit, there's nowhere else to put it, is that rich snippets. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you have used rich snippets yet. Have we got anybody? Um, for affiliates, you definitely need to uh, look into the review rich snippets. Uh, Google themselves have got a, uh, a, a testing tool on their site in their webmaster area and they have got guides on how to use them as well. So I, again, I've got that kind of information so if you want, want to drop me a line anytime asking me how it works, you can do. But these are going to start replacing descriptions in the SERPs. So you might have seen some of them already where they have the stars and the review will come in on Google in, instead of the normal search description. And obviously that massively impacts click-through rates. If, you can, if you've got a nice little image with stars and a positive review coming up in your SERPs, instead of a, just a block of text, people are much more likely to click through to your site. So it's a, one of the aspects of SEO that is going to be quite important for affiliates. And with caffeine coming into play, I think it's something you all definitely need to look at. All right, images and SEO. So obviously search engine spiders can't see images, but they do index the data. Um, there has been proof in recent tests that images in your content and how you treat images can affect normal text rankings. So, there's a couple of tips. Always fill in the alt attribute, just remember it's not a tag, and keep it short and sweet, again, on your keyword themes. Don't, don't go for 10 keyword long alt tags because they simply look spammy and make you look like a bad SEO. Um, remember your consistency. Surrounding images with consistent theme copy, this is a a relatively old SEO thing now, but if you want your images to rank inside Google Image Search, you need to surround them with text which is relevant. Um, I would recommend usually positioning them near a H tag as well. So if you want to rank an image with teeth whitening, get a H tag with teeth whitening, get some text around teeth whitening, alt text the image with teeth whitening, and hopefully you'll see some results from that. Um, obviously, the same rules apply with copy that always apply with SEO. It needs to be unique, it needs to be quality um, to help you all. Uh, image file names, I, I, my own tests have shown that this has a small effect. Uh, if, if you do any Google search for that, say if you just Google image search for cake, you'll notice that every file in that Im image search has got cake in its name. So it, it obviously does have a small effect, and I have seen it change normal SERPs as well. Um, but again, as with alt text, just keep it short and descriptive. Don't try to go for like 10, 10 keyword long image names. And some people do or don't use the title attribute inside images. I would say you don't need to use this for SEO. It's an accessibility feature, and abusing it will probably see you getting penalized. OK, H tags have been a recent hot topic. These are of medium importance for me at the minute. Um, they are still worth using the first two to three levels of H tags. So that's H1, H2, and H3. I think that the reason that they've changed recently is people were using them a lot like putting whole paragraphs in them and things like that, which is obviously just a, a silly spammer's tactic. Um, and Google have responded by making them a little bit less important. But again, if you keep it on topic, 
keep, make sure you're keeping your H tag the similar text to your title tag. That's definitely been shown to have an effect. And make sure that you use it to actually separate your page in a hierarchical structure. So all that means is that you only have one H1 tag. Under your H1 tag, you can have H2 tags, multiple of them, and under those have H3 tags. So think of it like a collapsing bullet point list. You don't need five H1 tags on your page because simply that's not how the H tag is used. And if you're using five H1 tags, it, it looks wrong straight away. With the advent of HTML5, that, that hierarchical structure becomes more important. As more sites adopt HTML5, you'll notice that there's new, new tags to structure your page, like navigation and things like that. And dividing your page up with H tags will just be that little bit more important. But I think that's probably about two or three months away before more of us use HTML5 coding. Um, most important thing, again, just keep it short and focused. Don't, don't put a paragraph inside H tags, it's not gonna work. Keyword density, I think this is fairly high importance at the minute. Um, a lot of people have talked about this before, and the most important thing to highlight here is there's no magic number. F aiming for 5%, I've heard a lot of people say, aiming for 3%, I've heard a lot of people say, it's simply not true. It depends on your topic, and it depends on the consistency of your page, so you've gotta take it on a page by page basis. Um, the most important thing is, as with every, every good SEO will tell you, is natural quality content. If you shoehorn in loads of keywords in your content, it's difficult to read for other users, and Google know that. Their algorithms take that into account, and they will penalize you for it. So always go with effective copy for conversion, and where you can, use your keywords. That's my best advice. Focus on your conversion. That's the most important thing. Hopefully, your rankings will follow from the other factors, and if you've got good content on the site, then it'll be good anyway. Um, one of the most things people often talk about is the bold and italics, putting keywords in bold and italics. I don't see a huge advantage from that. Um, sometimes I've seen sites with bold text and keywords rank better, but I think it's probably more of a coincidence. Use it for formatting, use it for your conversion formatting, but I wouldn't focus on it for SEO. And uh, it also seems that this early text uh, that ha happened in the title tag recently, it, it goes for page copy as well. So after your opening, after your opening paragraph and you've got your uh, conversion text, try and get some, some keyword copy in there. Again, I want it to be natural. I don't want you to force keywords in there, but earlier on, the better. Page rank, again, this is probably one you've all heard about, you've all talked about. At the minute, I do not see page rank as important, as important at all. Um, my, the, the reason is I control sites that are PR zero and rank for terms that get 25,000 searches a month. And I guarantee that it's, they've not just lost it, they've never been higher than three. So don't worry about page rank, it's not that important anymore. It, it still shows a relative quality of a site compared to another one, and I think it's probably a little bit important when if you're looking to actually buy links, then maybe you should be looking for the higher page rank sites. But I don't feel it's a, a huge thing at the moment. Don't worry about page rank coming and going at all. Page speed, uh, obviously this has recently been added to Google Webmaster Tools. A lot of people have been using a lot of focus on this recently, but again, it's a low importance, especially for our sites, uh, affiliate sites, it's not gonna be that big a deal. Google themselves have said that they use it on less than 2% of all search queries as a ranking factor. Um, however, that being said, page speed helps conversion. A fast loading site is a good site and it'll keep your users interested. So here's a, just a few tips. Use gzip. Uh, gzip technology is basically done on your server. It can be enabled via HCI access and some cPanels will have it in as well. Um, again, the HCI access file I'll give you at the end of this presentation has got three ways to enable gzip on your server. Um, different servers have different parameters. You'll just have to see which one yours is. I, I know that if a lot of you use things like HostGator and GoDaddy, um, they tend to use the first example in my HCI access file, but if it doesn't work, you can re turn it back off again and try the next one or contacting your hosting company for more information if you're really stuck. Basically, gzip will compress files that are sent to your browsers, um, your, your visitors, and it will make it that little bit quicker, especially on CMS-driven sites like WordPress or Magento or anything like that. Gzip does have a big effect because they send a lot of scripts, so it compresses the scripts, makes them a lot more condensed, sometimes 60 to 80% quicker. Um, and the other tip on PageSpeed is just to keep your code clean. Don't laden it down with comments, don't laden it down with scripts that you don't need. If you're using WordPress, keep your plugins to a minimum because they'll also make it load a lot slower. Internal links, um, 
last two or three years, internal links have probably risen in importance. Um, a lot more people try to use them to manipulate page rank uh, with no follow when that first came out, and uh, probably conical tag recently as well. Uh, my number one tip is don't try and manipulate page rank with internal links. It looks obvious. Any SEO can see it from a mile away, and Google do have SEOs working in-house to spot this kind of stuff. So don't, don't try and manipulate internal PR. It doesn't work, and it's a bit of a waste of time because it's only your internal PR anyway. Um, the, probably the best development recently is first link counts more. Just remember that the higher up the page links are, the more they count, and also... S number, the same number of links to the same page has an effect. So say if you've got a link fairly high up your navigation with the word home in, and then you've got a link in your footer with your keyword in, uh, Google will spider that home one if it's physically located first and then ignore the anchor text on your boilerplate at the bottom. Uh, there's no way around that unless you position your footer higher with CSS, uh, which is possible but difficult. Um, it's not a huge deal anyway because uh, you've got to have navigation and it's got to be right. But my advice is try and keep your navigation with keyword links in where possible, especially if it's high up. Because this uh, the thing with Google spidering the first link and giving more priority to it has been proven quite a few times now. A lot of people have been doing tests on it. A lot of people have seen it have an effect. So that works for internal and external links as well. So just try first link on the page, higher up links, give them the keyword priority that they need. Use blogs and other resources to obviously link, to, link internally to resources on your site. Um, use keywords for doing this and just make sure that whenever you've got a chance to link inside, say, say if you've got some reviews or testimonials on your site, link to them in your content. If you write an article, don't write an article that's just solid text with nothing in there. Reference your testimonials, reference, say, recipes or tips that you've got on the site and make sure you link internally to them. And think back to consistency. If You've got um, a subject, say weight loss. Google will recognize that recipes are a connected subject to weight loss. So get some recipes on your site. Get some internal links with, with weight loss recipe keywords on there because it will help. And again, I'll focus on the Wonder Wheel. If you go to weight loss on the Wonder Wheel, you will see recipe keywords coming off it. And uh, it's worth expanding the content on your site to include some stuff like that. Okay, uh, external links, obviously, is probably one of the biggest factors of SEO. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. So, again, focus on f first link counts. If you're, putting, if you're posting articles up somewhere, make sure you link to different URLs. Don't link it all to your index page because it will take away importance as the page goes down. Um, also, remember your consistency. Link back with the same keywords that you're targeting on your page and the same keywords on your title tags and your header tags. Um, Obviously, as the page goes down as well, so does the pe uh, as the page goes down with the power, so does the page rank juice. If you actually do still so so bothered about page rank, again, target for the top links on the pages. Use tools like Majestic SEO. Does anybody use Majestic? Um, I definitely recommend if you're bothered about your SEO, sign up to Majestic. It's free. You've just got to put a verification file on your website. It's a fantastic tool for monitoring backlinks. It'll, it'll help you see a nice little graph of when links were discovered, um, when they were counting in there. And these days, Yahoo and Google's link commands are not accurate. Majestic is much more accurate, and I'll give you a much better overview. Um, and again, when you're structuring link building campaigns, remember your home page is important, but your deep pages need links too. So if you've got recipes on your site, if you've got articles on your site, and you're posting articles on easy or whatever, link, link to a few different pages. Don't just link to the home page. A few more tips. Be careful with paid linking. Uh, I still think that if you're struggling to get links and you need a bit of a boost, it's still a good tactic. Um, but it is risky. So just watch out for that. Um, try more. Try other things first. So guest posting is a big, big push at the minute. A lot of, there's a lot of guest posting communities up there. Write an article on topic, submit it to the guest posting communities, and people could take that up and put that up there for free. And all you've done is write an article. Um, Google Spider's written URLs. So if you write a URL in an article that's not hyperlinked, Google will still spider that URL. Again, this has been proven with countless tests by big people. Even SEO models have tested this one. So it, if you can't get a, a href link, write your URL down instead. And 
Gain a range, range of links from different domains is important as link count in general. So getting 20 links off one page is nowhere near as valuable as getting links off of 10 different sites. So if you've got the choice to put the time into that, go for the different domains. They, they're just more important. And another tip, I, a lot of people don't really use this, but using search operators inside Google to find relevant directories, article submission sites, and social networking sites. So uh, is everybody aware what search operator is? Um, it's basically using Google's inbuilt tools, so you can use like a plus or an, the entitle command to find article directories that only, say, only concentrate on, on dentist stuff. Um, I'll put a list of these search operators up there for you to have. Uh, I've not got one with me now, but this will essentially let you submit articles, build links and directories on relevant topics. And a big mistake people go is they go away and they build thousands of directory links on general directories that are not related to their site at all. And while you know link count is important and having thousands of backlinks will help you a little bit, if you've got 100 backlinks from very relevant directories, it will do you a lot more good. Um, so I'll put those search operators up there for you to find um, on more niche forum or something like that. Just use those, put a keyword in with the operator and find relevant article, article submission sites, directory sites and social networking sites to build links from with those. Okay, uh, freshness and authority. I'm just going to talk a little bit about this probably because you, you might have heard about it if you read SEO forums. Um, freshness and authority are basically qualitative terms to describe things about your site. Authority is basically new PR. You can't see it, there's no PR, there's no authority bar, but uh, authority is defi definitely matters. It's things like how often your site is mentioned in, in the social networking sphere, um, how often your brand is referenced to, and also how often things like reviews are put on your site or testimonials, things like that. For affiliate sites, it's a, a lot harder to build authority, but it can still be done with good content and good links. Um, and again, it, you can, Authority is tied into relevance and consistency. You can't be an authority in every keyword. You can only be an authority in a range. So just keep, keep it tight with your keyword targeting again, and you will find that it gets a lot better. Freshness is what it says, just how often it's updated. It's, for a long time now, it's been regarded as an SEO factor, and it definitely is. Um, freshness isn't just posting a blog post every day for the sake of it. I've got to emphasize that, that that's not what freshness is. It's just keeping your site up to date in a general context. So maybe a minimum of, say, two, two posts a week or something like that. It's staying on top of industry news. So if something big happens in the industry, making sure that you mention it. Uh, a great source of doing that is subscribing to topics on Google News Alerts. So say if you're starting up a teeth whitening uh, affiliate site, subscribe to that news. Find out when something happens in the teeth whitening field so that you can put it on your affiliate site and make it look like you're part of the industry. Because again, that comes back to consistency, it comes back to authority. If, you're, if something big happens and your site doesn't notice it, why would Google want to give it to its users? Uh, because there's 500 other sites out there that did notice it. It's, it's just again about keeping up with the competitor. Um, freshness as well relates to QDF, which some people call query data freshness, some people call something else, it depends where you're from. Uh, QDF is basically the, the caffeine, uh, you can search results by time. I don't know if any of you have noticed this on the Jazz interface on the left hand side. Uh, it automatically does that a little bit. Uh, it integrates it into universal search. So if you've got a brand new post on a WordPress blog and it, it's, you know, it's a similar subject to something which someone did two years ago, your post is more likely to rank because data freshness does matter these days. So a, a great thing for that is to come back to topics that you've posted on. So if you say you post an article now about how teeth whitening helps single mums, then in two years' time, hit that topic up again. Make sure you've got a fresh version of it on your site. Talk about the new things that have happened. With WordPress, it might even be an idea to actually use the same URL to delete the old post, put a new post on there, repost, it retakes it with the same URL. It's new content, but it's got all the old backlinks still going to it. <coughs> and just an emphasis, the integration of Jazz has put real-time search results in there. Not that relevant for you guys because it's mostly on brand terms at the minute, but keep an eye out for them coming on yours as well. Finally, just some tools I recommend. I can't emphasize enough how much all sites should be in all three Webmaster Tools. Um, Yahoo, Bing, and Google all offer Webmaster Tools programs. They're extremely easy to use and extremely easy to sign up for. You just need FTP access. It's sometimes not even that. Make sure that you sign up for these. You keep an eye on what the Webmaster Tools are saying on your 404s 
on things like uh, bad redirects, incoming links, everything like that. It, it doesn't give you everything in the world you need. Like I say, Majestic SEO is better for links, but there's a lot of information that you will miss out on if you've not got Webmaster Tools installed on your sites. Some people are slightly worried that if they put Webmaster Tools on their sites that they'll lose rankings or Google will ban them and things like that. I have never seen this happen, and I've I must have SEO a good four or five hundred sites in my time, and I've never been banned for adding Webmaster Tools or Analytics. Um, Google themselves have done several vid videos in their Webmaster Help section where they explicitly say that they do not use these things to uh, determine rankings. And the only way any of it links is through Analytics' PPC section. That's the only way it would link to rankings at all. Um, and even then, it's your PPC rankings, not your SEO ones. Uh, Google Analytics is still the best analytics software that's available for free. I recommend you use it if you know what you're doing with it. Um, it's relatively easy to install, especially if you're using WordPress. There's lots of plugins that will just add that on there. It's great for monitoring traffic and your keywords. And the, the best thing about using analytics software is that it will help you keep your uh, keyword stuff in check. So you see new keywords coming into your site that you're ranking for, you get traffic for. It means you can go and research that and maybe either expand your site if it's relevant or build a new site to target that stuff if, you, if it's converting well. Um, there's also hundreds of other functions in analytics that I really can't go into now, but it's definitely worth doing. Majestic SEO, free account, free link analysis. It's the best one on the internet. Definitely use that for analyzing your links. This gzip tester I've linked to, if you enable gzip on your site, it'll just let you know if it's working and how much it's compressing it by. So if the gzip's new to you, the gzip test is good for knowing that. Google Insights is fantastic, again, for exploring this keyword themes. Um, it will give you the five rising searches, five related searches, and top ten relevant keywords for any keyword that you put in there. Um, so say we, we've got the teeth whitening example again. You can put teeth whitening in there, and it'll tell you what the latest five rising searches is for that, um, which is great for you writing new content for your site, because you can find out what the newest topics are, what people are searching for in that field. So I recommend maybe once a week or so, just check insights, see what the rising searches are so you can respond. There's rich snippets testing tools. I mentioned rich snippets earlier. Uh, th this URL will show you if the rich snippets are working on your site or not. If you just take, take the two tools and rich snippets off the end in the webmaster section, you'll find the index about how rich snippets are implemented. Um, again, I will put that on the Monish forum for you, but definitely look into rich snippets if you've got reviews on your site. And in my opinion, if you're generating sitemaps for Webmaster Tools, the best tool for that is this XML sitemaps one. It's the tidiest. If the script is very cheap if you want to buy it for mass production on your sites, but there is actually a free one on the site. As long as your site is below 500 pages, it's free to generate. Um, I recommend taking a look at that. Header status checker. If you're having problems with 404s or redirects or anything like that, this status checker will let you know what your thing is actually kicking out to the search engines. So. Just remember, 404 means it won't index it. 301 means it won't index it because it's redirecting to a new page. And 302 means it will keep it in the index. So if you've got a redirect serving 302 and you're expecting the, the page to disappear from Google's index, it won't happen. You've got to make sure it's 301 or 404, and that's the tool to check with. And Google's search-based keyword tool as well is bringing it back to um, this relevancy and consistency. Uh, the search based keyword tool will tell you relevant, uh, related keywords and it'll tell you how much they're searched and stuff like that, but it's based on recent activity um, as opposed to the normal keyword tool, which doesn't, it bases it on general activity. Uh, and again, I've mentioned Wonder Wheel a few times, that's how you find it. Use Wonder Wheel to find topics. Honestly, it's, it's the best piece of advice I can give you for using Google at the moment. Wonder Wheel is a really good indicator at checking out how Google is relating its topics so that you can do the same thing. And remember, if Google thinks two topics are related and your site's got two topics that are related, you're going to be much more likely to rank for them. Uh, there's a URL for the HT Access template. Uh, any HT Access, some of you will have used it, some of you won't. That template has got loads of things in for you to do. It, it can disable indexes, do redirects, uh, do re URL rewrites. It can do force files to save as. There's, there's literally like 50 commands in there for you to use that, I've, uh, that I use on a day-to-day -day basis, and I've put them all in that template for you. you uh, the hashes on, are down the side of the HT Access file are comments. If you want to enable something, you just got to remove the hash and put your domain in, obviously. Um, 
these couple of websites, SEO, Moz, Homer, they're good SEO places to find stuff at. SEO, Moz is very, it's often slow with its news, it, but it's one of the biggest people in the industry. They do give reliable information. Uh, and Dave is the guy who runs the other blog. He is actually a computer scientist, so he knows lots about how algorithms work. And I definitely recommend you read his site because he'll give you information about what patents mean and what changes actually mean for you as opposed to what they're just an SEO general side. He'll, he'll look at the computer science side of it and it's much more accurate. Um, obviously, always subscribe to the Google Webmaster Central blog so you know when they've done an update. Google will never do a major update without doing a post about it, so it's great to be subscribed to that so you know what's going on. And also, Search Engine Watch is a great blog for uh, general industry news. If you're not subscribed, again, I recommend you subscribe to that one. And that's it. Would anyone like to ask anything about SEO? Anything, any ranking factors that I've not covered? Yes, sir. Okay, um, for geotargeting, if you're very strongly about geotargeting, then yes, it is important. I would say probably eight out of 10 importance. Um, if you're using a generic hosting company like HostGator, uh, then you will usually be all right because HostGator, while their servers are mostly based in the US and things like that, because they use, run such a huge server network, um, they won't be geotargeted. So, you're usually safe with that, but to be sure, if you really, really want .co.uk rankings and you want to focus on .co.uk site, definitely go for UK hosting because it does help. Uh, someone over here? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to put the I'm going to put the slides online, and again, I'm going to copy a lot of the details into the morning's <laughs> forum. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll put the slides online and I'll put the uh, stuff in the morning's forum so you can access it easily. Uh, any other questions? How important is social bookmarking? So obviously there's a lot of websites out there now that like, and click on discuss on websites which people are not. Hmm. Um, well, that's what like. uh, well, you're thinking about it from a link building technique. Yeah. Um, social bookmarking sites are a moderate link building technique. They'll get your links, they'll get your links fast. Um, but because they're often driven by the plig template, which is you know how it looks like like dig and it's got the link stuff, because it uses that template, they're often very easy to detect and filter out by Google. So um, try to go for the ones that don't use the plig template. That's my advice to you because that Google are aware that there are hundreds of them and that they'll they'll just filter a lot of it out. Um, but that they are a good way to get quick links and especially if you want a new site indexed. Um, bookmarking sites are very useful for that. Yes, mate? Uh, is there still any benefit you think, to subscribing to Yahoo's business directory? Uh, yeah, I do believe there is. Um, it's a strong website, it's an aged website, and it's, uh, it is high PR. So it's, in terms of buying a link, which is essentially what you're doing, it's a safe high PR link. Um, and in my opinion, PR is only important when you link buying. So yes, I think it is worth it. If you can afford it, do do it. But it's not for every site. You don't need it on every little affiliate site that's set up. Just do it for your main ones and the ones you're really focused on getting tough rankings for. So say if you're going after a short tail keyword on a big website, then do it for that site. But don't really waste the money on a very small site going for long tail keywords. In terms of domain age, mm -hmm. you mentioned Yeah, D domain age, I believe, is still a factor and it is important. Um, with domain age, one of the principal problems is that people don't understand when you switch owners of a domain, yeah, they reset that. So Google know when you switch owners of a domain because you change it. Well, if you do it properly anyway, you'll change the certification and stuff like that and they'll know. Um, however, there's a lot of other things like backlinks and authority that aren't reset when you buy an old domain and switch it over to you because they're still there. Those links are still coming into your site and things like that. So um, buying a domain for domain age is still, is still a useful tactic, and it, but think about it more for the authority and the links than just the domain age factor. Yes, mate. Yeah. 
Um, okay, I think there's probably two questions in there. There's the C-class IPs and location, country location. So you're saying you've got several websites. Should you put them in different countries or should you just put them all on the same host? Um, if, you can, if it's not too much of a problem, I suggest that you use different hosts for websites in the same niche. So if, you're, if you've got a site that's targeting Mail Extra and Performer 5 and Size Genetics, I think putting all those on the same server will probably end up being an issue for you. Um, Google will notice that there's a lot of on-topic sites on there. It won't directly harm your rankings, but if you keep adding sites to it, I could see it doing that. Um, so split, split your sites, your topics up across different servers, but um, I see no harm in saying putting a weight loss site, a uh, male health site, uh, dentist site, all on the same IP, because they're targeting different things, they're different subjects. Google's got no qualms about that at all. Okay. Yes, mate. What was your feeling on Co.uk as against Org.uk? Org.uk, yeah. Org.uk is technically a subdomain. Uh, while Co.uk, unfortunately, is as well. But Co.uk is widely regarded as the root domain these days. Um, if you've got a choice between them, use co.uk. Um, org.uk isn't a bad TLD. It's okay. Um, there are a lot of high-powered sites that use org.uk, and I have definitely seen org.uk site affiliate sites as what kind of sites as well ranking. Um, I would say steer away from the ones that are like me.uk and stuff like that. But org.uk is a decent TLD. Yeah. No. Uh, some people say avoid .info. I don't think it's that bad. I think that a lot of people who buy .info domains end up being spammy, which is why .info don't rank. But if you treat a .info well, then it will rank just as well as any other site. Um, what I would say is it's not very UK focused. So if you try to rank at Google.uk, it's more of a generic focus one. So you might find you struggle for geo-targeting with it. Um, but if you're targeting .com, I've certainly seen it, .info domains ranking in .com. I'm sure you all have seen them on the first page of Google. Um, the, the only issue is, like I say, that they tend to be snapped up by spammers and stuff because that's the one that people forget about when they're registering brands and things like that. And it's the one that's left over for exact match, so people will go and get that one. Uh, it doesn't affect your site, so someone spamming on a .info domain doesn't mean that your .info domain don't rank, but you have to watch domain history there. So if you buy a domain uh, .info off somebody else, be wary that they might have used it to spam in the past. Uh, but to, to answer shortly, and I don't think that it's a bad domain at all. Hey right, guys. Okay. What are your thoughts on the .co domains? Obviously that's been released very soon. Hmm. Um, I mean, it could be described as a cheap .co but also just the problem of um, people, people are used to type in .com domains. Hmm. So yeah, I'm not, I, a lot of people have been talking about this recently. I'm not too, I'm not thinking that they're going to be that, I, I don't think they'll be overly successful, partially because of the reason that you've said, uh, and also partially because a lot of companies out there who are going to go out and get their brand, so most affiliate, say people who are in affiliate networks, um, they're not, they're probably not going to go out and buy their exact match.co domain, um, but simply going out there and buying proactor.co it is not going to guarantee your rankings and there's no way to know how google are going to treat these domains yet so i think it i definitely would advise investing a lot of money in any .co domains um i think that it's going to have to be a wait and see to see how google handles them uh, because it's simply too early to tell at the minute but uh, your point on mistypes is extremely valid that it's in terms of people, people getting links to your site um, naturally, so other people linked to your site, in terms of direct traffic to your site, and also in terms of actually your written URL and people misreading and mistyping that, it's highly likely people will make a mistake. Um, so I, I probably recommend against it based on those grounds.